Little do you know how I'm breaking while you fall asleep. Little do you know I'm still haunted by the memories. Little do you know I'm trying to pick myself up piece by piece. Little do you know I, I need a little more time. Underneath it all, I'm held captive by the hole inside. I've been holding back for the fear that you might change your mind. I'm ready to forgive you, but forgetting is a hard fight. Little do you know I, I need a little more time. I'll wait, I'll wait. I love you like you've never felt the pain. Just wait. I promise you don't have to be afraid. Just wait, my love is here and here to stay, so lay your head on me. Just lay your head on me. Once again, good morning, Compton Hill. It's my privilege to be here before you, bringing you prayer this morning, preparing for our service. Reverend Vassar is going to bring the word, and we pray that it touches hearts everywhere. We'd like this to be seen everywhere if possible. We want to make disciples as we have been commanded. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you humbly just to give you honor, glory, and praise. Heavenly Father, you are great and greatly to be praised. We call your name because you are worthy to be praised, Father God, and we love you. Father God, you created heaven and earth, and you've created us and we are wonderfully and fearfully made in your image, Father God. And we just thank you. Thank you for all you've done. We thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for this earth, Father God. We just thank you. We have gratitude and humility, Father. We, we love you, and we will never stop praising you and honoring you, Lord. Heavenly Father, you have just done so many wonderful things. You're almighty, all-knowing, ever-present, immovable, and unchanging. And for that, we thank you. And we have nothing but gratitude. I'll say it again, nothing but gratitude. Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive our sins, the ones we've committed knowingly and unknowingly, Father God. You said that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, you can be kept at your word because you cannot lie. We love you and we just ask you to forgive us our sins, forgive the sins of our brothers and sisters. Father, just, I ask that we come to you with humility and pray and seek your face, Father, so that you may forgive us and heal our land. Our land is in dire need of healing. Father, we ask that you uh, just cast your eyes upon us, Father. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. We just know that you can handle this pandemic. You are not caught by surprise by it. You are able to do all things. All the pandemonium that's going on, you're aware of, Father. You know that there are good people out there trying to make change, and we ask you to just bless them and keep them safe. For the ones that are just causing havoc and wreaking havoc, Father, we ask that you touch hearts, soften hearts, change hearts and change minds, Father. We ask that you look upon them with mercy and give them a chance to, to look away from evil and to look towards you. Father, help them to look towards your believers for your light. Let them see the light that reflects from us, that we know who you are, that they may see through you through us. Father God, we ask that you bless our families, bless our children, bless the church, the body of Christ, Father God. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the prayer, Lord God. Buy the truth and sell it not. But where the fit is spoken like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, who is also the God of our comfort and the God of our hope, who according to his abundant mercy hath gathered us together again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, Compton Hill, and all the rest of y'all. 
It's wonderful to be here, amen, on this uh, fourth Sunday of June. Now, hear me. Uh, uh, I was listening to uh, Deacon uh, Biggers and his fervent prayer. Uh, he said, I have any father over half a dozen times. Uh, and I, <clears throat> I cannot allow uh, the month of June uh, to expire and I not, 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 not talk about fathers. Uh, beloved, I had a phenomenal father. I had a phenomenal father-in-law or father-in-love. Uh, I've had, uh, my dad was, on a scale of one to 10, my dad was a dozen. And with that, uh, I want to talk about how vital uh, fathers are. Uh, beloved, uh, the time will come <clears throat> in our lives uh, when, when there will be nothing more important in your life if not already, then for God to answer your prayer. Now hear me. I'm saying that to say this. If nothing else that God wants done uh, by us, through us, and for us, by leaving us here on this earth once being saved, is that we give folks a clearer vision of God, of seeing a clearer view of who God is. Uh, and I'll say it again. Beloved, the time will come in your life if not already, when God's answers to your prayers will be the most important thing on this earth. You can learn many things, but you can't learn anything better than to learn to pray. Nothing can stand against a man that can pray because prayer can do anything God can do and God can do anything. Oh, you better hear me. Prayer is the order of the day. The disciples asked the Lord Jesus, Teach us to pray. Here's what Jesus taught. <clears throat> now, before we go any further, uh, let me first say it's not a prayer to be recited. Uh, our Lord said to pray in this manner. Uh, you know, sometimes in public assemblies, someone will stand and say, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, my friends, you don't say a prayer. You pray a prayer. Oh, I'm going to say that again. You don't say a prayer. You pray a prayer. And that's vital to understand because uh, let's say if uh, uh, I come and say, let's sit in your, in your living room and let's say a conversation. You don't say a conversation. Prayer is not talking at God. It's talking with God. Prayer is not talking at God. It's talking with God. And this is the model prayer. Uh, uh, this is not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in John 17. This is the model prayer. Let us open our Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> verses 9 through 13. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And it says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now hear me. <clears throat> We're going to stay today in verse 9. Verse 9 says, After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now hear me. We're going to stay in verse 9 because there's a world of truth in this model prayer that the Lord Jesus gave us that will last through the ages. The title of my message today is When We Say Father. When We Say Father. What happens when we say Father? Uh, basically, three things. We express his nature, a father. You know, some call him the eternal unknown. Some, the unmoved mover. Uh, kids that went to the show all the time doing Star Wars called him uh, the Force. You know, like, may the Force be with you. Uh, but 167 times in the Gospels, Jesus calls him Father. Oh, help me. He says, Father. When you call him Father, you express his nature. God's nature is the nature of a father. We don't call him that because, because of the way we know our fathers. Now hear me, do you know that Jesus Christ, uh, uh, 
the essence of the Bible speaks of God as Jesus' Father. More than he speaks of as, as God as our Father. Oh, you better hear me. You better hear me. Uh, so as to say <clears throat> to our, our prayers or the reflections of our Father, oh no, our concept of the Father and the very fact that we are human fathers is that we are made in His image, in the image of God. Beloved, God, His fatherhood is not the reflection of a fatherhood, but vice versa. God is not like a father on analogy. God is our father. Now hear me. He is a father. We're not talking about what God is like when we say father. We're not talking about what God is what God seems like as a father. We're talking about what God is. He's a father. You say, uh, well, that's a big deal. Everybody knows that. You know, there are a lot of feminists and philosophers trying to remove the idea of God as father. Some have actually referred to God as she. Oh, you better hear me. Some would like to say, our parent who are in heaven. You say that's ridiculous? I say amen. It is Jesus who taught us to say our Father because God is our Father. The basic, intrinsic nature of who God is is a Father. Uh, put this verse in your margin. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. But to us there is only one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we, we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things, and we by him. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. Oh, you better hear me. Not talking about what God is like, it's what God is. This is not anti-female or pro-male. My friend, this is simply sound Bible doctrine. We express his nature. Amen. Secondly, we express his nature. When we say our father, we expect his nurture. Amen. They go together. His nature and his nurture go together, beloved. His nature in his nurture. See, when we say our father, we infer that we are his children. Sired by him. Oh, help me somebody. Spiritually begotten of him. God is not universally the father of all people. Oh, I need you to get this. So often we hear the universal father of all people. No, he is not. He is not. God is not the father of all people. I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that resonate. Let that marinate in your, in your system a moment. God is the father of those he has sired and born into his family. Amen. John chapter one, verse 11 to 13 says this. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Those he sired and born into his family. Jesus said to the unbelievers of his day, in John 8 and 44, he said, you are of your father the devil. Oh, you better hear me. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh of, speak of the lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Oh, you better hear me. Like father, like son. Oh, beloved. Galatians 3 and 26 tells us, for ye are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Better hear me, beloved. We become children of God, and that's the way we become children of God. God is indeed our Father. We are supernaturally born again. His very life becomes into us. Now, I know some of you are thinking, wait a minute, Pastor. Uh, didn't God create all things? Uh, didn't he create human beings? Wouldn't that make him the father of all human beings? No, that makes him the creator of all human beings and of all things. There's a difference between fatherhood and creation. See, God created many things, beloved. He created rats, bugs, roaches, buzzards, rattlesnakes. He's not their father. He's their creator. Oh, you better get this. God becomes our father not by creation, but by conception. By conception. 
When we are born into his family and the Bible says we become partakers of his divine nature, you must be born again. Oh, you better hear me. So, so he is our father. He has a responsibility to us. Now, we often talk about our responsibility to him, and we do have a responsibility to him. All children have a responsibility to their parents. But there's two sides to that coin. Parents have a responsibility to their children. Oh, you better hear me. We would never have to charge a level of child neglect to our Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. God, our Father, will take care of his own. God will fulfill his duties to you, which should be a great comfort as you think of God as your father. Oh, help me somebody. Because we're his children, we have his care. Now, in Matthew chapter uh, 6 and 26, uh, it says, uh, consider the birds of the air. They sow not, uh, neither do they reap, but your, heavenly, but your heavenly father feeds them. Not their heavenly father, your heavenly father feeds them. He's not the father of the birds. Oh, help me somebody. But your Heavenly Father feeds them. It says in that, do you see the logic of our Lord? What Jesus is saying? What farmer, beloved, what farmer would feed his chickens and starve his children? You're not a beggar. Children don't beg their parents for food. Oh, help me somebody. We have the Father's nature and his nurture. Amen. Not only do we have his care, we also have his correction. Amen. I'm, in, I'm still in Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now we're no longer speaking of his care. Now we're speaking of his correction. Oh, help me. He's not just a doting father that, that says, live any way you like, and I, and I will not correct you. He says, because I care, I will correct you. Hebrews says, beloved, that he, he who, uh, if you're not, if God does not correct you, then you're bastards. Oh, you better hear me. Now, a bastard is a fatherless child. Oh, you better get this. If you are a son of God, God loves you too much to let you get by with sin. Some get baptized, continue to live in sin, and nothing ever happens. Some say, God must really love me. <laughs> he lets me get by with sin. He doesn't love you like he loves his own. Not like he loves his own, beloved, not like his children. All the Lord loves, he chastens. You better hear me. Had you been God's child, he'd have taken your butt to the woodshed. Oh, you, you better hear me here. Amen. Why hasn't he chastened me, you might think? Because you have not been saved. Baptism does not save you. Oh, help me somebody. No more than you're wearing a wedding band makes you mad. Oh, you better hear me. Beloved, if a mother or father goes to the front yard and sees all the kids acting up, she's only going to get her children. That's all she better get. Amen. She can't legally bother anybody else's kids. God deals with his children on a cash basis. He deals with the devil's children on a credit basis. Oh, I need you to get this. He deals with us as a father. He deals with them as a judge. Oh, you better know that's a significant difference, beloved. God deals with us now. He deals with them at the judgment. The Father judges them later, but deals with us day by day. Oh, I love him today. Amen. The moment we sin, God steps in to chastise us. Beloved, hear me. When God saved you, he doesn't fix it where you won't sin anymore. He fixes it where you can't sin and enjoy it anymore. Oh, know the difference. He loves us too much to let us sin and get by with it. Whom the Father loves, he chases. We can expect his care. We can expect his correction. And thirdly, we can expect his companionship. Oh, help me somebody. God wants to be with us. Oh, yes, Lord. A father-son or a father-daughter relationship is a beautiful thing to feel and a beautiful thing to see. Oh, you better hear me. Beloved, I'm called many things by many names. Stephen, uh, Steve, my sister calls me Steve-O, uh, my mother calls me Man-Man, uh, some folks call me Reverend, some call me Champ, some call me Big Man, and there's one who calls me Sweetheart. Uh, but there's something about the name Daddy. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. There are some days when I get busy 
I'm working, I'm pressured, caught up in, in my study on some business transactions, and I, and I really don't want to be disturbed. But when I hear that, there's an automatic calming effect on me. Oh, you better hear this. Because these are my children. Mm. They're mine. I've had people say, well, I wouldn't do that for my, my son. Well, that's not your son. I wouldn't do that for my, that's not your daughter. I'm talking about what's mine. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. When we go to God, we're not talking about some unmoved mover or an abstract being. We are talking about our Father. The Bible says he has put his spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Amen. Do you know what that means, Abba, Father? It means Daddy, Father. It's not a reference. Abba is like Dada, basic syllable that a child can say. Oh, you better hear me. So we can call the God of all the universe, Abba, Father, Daddy. Oh, beloved, we can spiritually sit on his lap, not wrestle, but nestle. Oh, I like that, beloved. Uh, hear me. I'm so glad that our Heavenly Father doesn't get so busy putting out the sun, the moon, the stars, running the universe, and commanding angels that he that he's, doesn't have time to just close his ledger and talk to me like I'm the only one on earth and there's nothing else better for him to do. Uh, let me say this parenthetically, beloved. There have been days when God has just uh, allowed me to sit on his lap and just talk. There's intimate conversations that I've had with God uh, as a father to a son that it's, it's like it's like almond joy is indescribably delicious. Uh, I can't describe it to you in words, uh, but it's something that once you experience it, uh, you know when it's happening. And beloved, uh, it, it's life altering, it's life changing. When you realize that God is your father. There are times when I used to ride in the car with my dad and some of the things my dad would say to me, I still, it still resonates today. And I don't want to get emotional, but, but he was my hero. And uh, having God as my father is having my dad, Willie Jean Vassar Sr., uh, uh, to the one um, umpteen, umpteen power. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Uh, uh, beloved, uh, there are times uh, when God has just talked to me and just he and I. You can come to God anytime, any day, and call him dad. Oh, you better hear me. And spiritually put your arms around his neck. Because, hear me, Compton Hill, he is a father. A father. Amen. You have his care. You have his correction. You have his companionship. You also have his compassion. Amen. The Bible says his compassions, they fail not. You know, before you have children, you think of the love of Jesus had when he died for our sins. But having a child, oh, you better hear me. You think of the great love the father had when he gave up his son. Oh, isn't that true? Mm. Fathers are compassionate. Uh, a true father will die for his children. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Gladly fling down his life for his children, which is exactly what the father did in his great compassion. You know, <clears throat> I was reading a story about a daughter and father who uh, had kind of a strenuous relationship argued a lot, but and one day she was arguing with him and <clears throat> got angry and said, Dad, I hate you, and ran out the door. And she ran out the door and he was just sitting there, you know, letting her go. And a couple weeks later, he had a heart attack. When he had the heart attack, uh, they rushed him to the hospital and, uh, and they called the daughter and said, uh, your dad's in the hospital and He's, uh, he's in, in, in pretty poor condition, but he's asking for you. And she said, oh, okay. And she hurried, you know, got her things together and got in the car and rushed to the hospital. When she got there, the nurse was sitting there with her dad. And uh, she walked in and the nurse said, uh, your father died 10 minutes ago. Uh, and she was crushed. And the nurse said, would you like to stay in here a while with him? And, and she said, uh, yeah, just let me sit here. While she was crying and controlling, but she looked over and there was an envelope on the table. And it had her name on it. And she got the envelope, opened it, and it said, Susie, this is Daddy. It said, I'm sorry about the argument that we had. 
and we're both passionate. You, the key is, Susie, you're just like me. And Susie knows your daddy loves you. But most importantly, I need you to be to know this, Susie. I know you love me. I've always known that you love me. And you're passionate and hollering because you love me. And I need you to rest assured that your daddy loves you. But even more, your daddy knows you love him. You know, when I read that, I was so blessed. Because no matter what happens, even an earthly father or mother has a love stronger than any other love. And yet our Heavenly Father says, even when our father or mother cast me aside, the Lord will take me up. Oh, help me somebody. Yes, so help me preach this thing. Oh, my friends, his compassions, they fail not. Just think of how that earthly father loved his daughter and how much more your Heavenly Father loves you. What a loving Heavenly Father. When we pray to God and say our Father, we express his nature, he is a father. We expect his nurture, he is a father who cares. He's a compassionate father, amen, and a companionate father, amen. He, he, my dear friends, is a correcting father. You better hear me. Look at our great God as a father. Look at him as a father, amen. Then there was one last thing I want to, and I'll close. Not only do we express his nature, Expect his nurture, but oh, beloved, we exalt his name. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Listen, our Father which art in heaven. You see that? Our Father which art in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Amen. When you pray this way, you exalt his name. Amen. First of all, you must know what the name is. Yes, Lord. Amen. You must recognize the name. Hallowed be thy name. Well, what name is that? What name is above all names when we pray this way? You know what Jesus Christ said when he was here on earth? Jesus Christ said while here on earth, he said, Father, I have manifested thy name. Oh, help me somebody. Oh. Isaiah says his name is wonderful. Oh, help me somebody. Philippians 2 and 9 says a name above every other name, and that name is Jesus. Help me somebody. Would you like to say it? Oh. Just say it. Jesus. I know you, I, I can hear y'all if you just uh, say it in your homes like you really mean it. Jesus. Uh, yes, Lord. Intimacy does not mean irreverence. Not only do you reverence and honor and praise the name, you rely on the name. Amen. When we hollow and, re and, and, and revere and honor and recognize and praise that name, we have great power in prayer. Amen. It makes a difference about that name. I'm reminded of a story where uh, two gentlemen walked into uh, a bank, and <clears throat> and uh, 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 while, he was, while the two gentlemen were walking out, one of the gentlemen ran into a buddy of his out, outside outside the bank, and it was a guy he went to high school with, and he's walking with another guy. They were all suited up, but this guy was homeless and shabby, and he noticed, and they said they went to high school together, and they were talking for a while and conversing, and he was talking about how he'd been down on his luck and looking for a place and trying to get his life together, and. Uh, the, the guys knew him, said, we went to high school together. Here, let me, let me help you. And he wrote him a check uh, for a significant amount of money. And <clears throat> he said, go and cash this. And the man said, oh, he looked at the check. He said, oh, I really appreciate it. But I can't go in the bank looking like this, smelling like this, shabby like this. And, <clears throat> and his buddy said, let me tell you something. He said, look at that check. Is your name on this check? He said, no. What name is on this check? He said, right, it's in my name. It's in my name. And they will honor and cast that check based on my name. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Uh, not on the, based on the person that's carrying the check. It's based on whose name is on the check. Beloved, we don't bring our shabbiness to God when we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, beloved, hear me. Uh, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. A father and son relationship is everything to God. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, the Bible says in John 3 and 35, the Father loveth the Son and has given all things into his hand. Beloved, the Gospel of John, which is my favorite book, in a special sense, emphasizes the love and the divine trinity of the Heavenly Father for the Son. The words love and Father and Son occur, occur more in this book than in any other book of the Bible. 
And there are at least eight references to this love in John's gospel. Oh, you better hear me. The first is in, our, in the text I just read, revealing that the Father has entrusted the care of the whole creation to the Son whom he loved. He has also shown him everything in creation. For the Father loveth the Son and shows him all things that himself doeth. Oh, you better hear me. The intimacy of a father and son. The father also loved the son because of his willingness to die for lost sinners. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it again? Oh, you better hear me. Then in the upper room, yes, Lord, as Christ prayed to his father, it was revealed that his, this divine love had existed in eternity and therefore must be both the root and the measure of all forms of true love ever since. Oh, you better hear me. Father, thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Yes, Lord. Parental love, marital love, phileo love, love of country, all types of genuine love are derived ultimately from this eternal love of the Father for the Son. Oh, you all are hearing me. Amen. And it is this love that can also be in us if we will have it, beloved. As the Father has loved me, Jesus says, so have I loved you. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Oh, help me somebody. It was thus he prayed and still prays, amen, for us, that the world may know that thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Oh, you ain't hearing me. And that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Oh, beloved, hear me. The Bible says in Isaiah, his name should be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. You better hear me, Prince of Peace, but Everlasting Father. I'm asking, beloved, is he your father today? Oh, help me somebody. He can be. He can be your father today. Uh, because Jesus Christ, his son, died for you. Oh, you better hear me. He died for you. Uh, he loved you so much that he gave his son for you. Oh, y'all aren't hearing me. He gave his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. He died one Friday on a hill called Calvary. And he stayed there all night Friday night. All day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But early, beloved, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. With teaching power. Preaching power. Kneeling power. Healing power. All power. Son power. Father power. Oh, you better hear me. I don't care what was going on in my household. We all knew that they, everything would be all right once Daddy came home. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, uh, there's been hits out. Daddy's home. Oh, get me somebody. It makes a difference when Daddy's home. Oh, beloved, hear me. Is he your father? Is he your father today? He can be. Today, you can step into the family of God. Today, you can receive eternal life. Today, you can become a partaker in, the, in his divine nature. Just come to Jesus. Trust him. He will save you. He will save you today. Today, beloved, as he told the thief on the cross, you'll be with me in paradise. He will make you what he wants you to be. Trust him, beloved, today. Uh, you know, I think that uh, the greatest gift that I've had in my manhood is the model I had for my father and his fatherhood. Uh, the greatest gift my dad gave gave us, my brother Butch, my sister Carla, amen, <clears throat> and Robert, uh, he gave us, he, he loved our mother. The greatest gift my dad gave us, he loved our mother. Oh, you better hear me. And the model that he had, that he gave us, uh, beloved, uh, he was a faithful believer, uh, he was a deacon, uh, he was my dad, my hero, uh, my mentor, uh, my tour mentor, uh, the champion of champions. Uh, but most of all, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, he was my father. Uh, people, let me tell you about my best friend. He's the kind of person I love you to the end. People, let me tell you that it's so much fun, whether we're talking man to man or whether we're talking son to son, he's my best friend. Jesus Christ, beloved, hear me. The Heavenly Father is your best friend. You ain't hearing me. And I don't care what best friend you got here on earth. 
All of those relationships will mean nothing if Jesus Christ is not your best friend. There's a saying, diamonds are a girl's best friend. But a best friend, you better hear me, is everybody's diamond. God bless you today. Let us prepare, amen, for, uh, for our benediction, amen. We thank God for the blessed privilege he's giving us, amen, to exhort him. Uh, beloved, let us receive uh, the benediction. Uh, look up and love him. Look down and pray to him. Uh, look in and trust him. Uh, look out and worship him. And live life expecting him. Now unto him, yes, Lord that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. I love your Compton Hill. Amen. Mm -hmm.